Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show today. My name is Mike Phillips. This is the Leadership Toolkit. Again, this show is here to serve you. We're here to talk to leaders in many different facets of business, have collaborative and constructive conversations with people that have done it and are doing it. And I have got an absolutely phenomenal guest for you today. She is leading a team of people and she is still on the front line. She's in the trenches right now. So we're going to talk about some successes. So we're going to, we might talk about some failures. We don't know where we're going to go with it, but we're going to talk about all things leadership. And I'd like to welcome my good friend, Melissa Hibden. Melissa, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to do this. This is my first one. So I'm a little nervous, but uh, there's no need to be nervous. You are going to be awesome. If you're, if you are half as awesome today as I know you to be in real life, it's, we are just going to absolutely rock it. Happy Wednesday to everybody. So Melissa, do me a favor. And then we're just going to get into having the conversation here and talking about some things uh, as with anybody so that the audience knows I sent you a few prep questions. We have not talked a whole lot beforehand, so it's going to be free flowing freestyle and uh, so do me a favor if you would first Melissa share with our audience, you know, what what's a little bit of your background in leadership? What are you doing now? And just fill people in. Yeah, so currently right now, I'm the business development manager for Marcosian Auto. We're in Utah, and we have five locations. Well, we just opened six. We have six now. And, um, you know, I lead a team of four BDRs, and I also have an assistant BDC manager. Um, and how I got started um, as a leader is... I mean, you could, it's hard to pinpoint when you kind of got started, but I would say, you know, as far as, you know, my professional um, life, I started at Marcosi and Auto when I was 20 years old and just kind of, you know, I started as a BDR and just kind of worked my way up um, and to where I am now. And before that, all I did was I was um, a preschool teacher, so I worked with kids, and you know I had to lead them in different ways. Um, but as far as the dealership world and the automotive world, I've been at Marcosi and Auto pretty much my whole life. So that's me. Great, and well, and I got to know you. I want to say eight years ago now, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was and pretty early on. When and I we were, we, we had a lot of conversations about like, how do you lead people? What are you doing? Boots on the ground. And, uh, I, I vaguely remember you telling me you'd been a preschool teacher and it is, that's a different style of leadership, right? That's all about lead by doing right. Taking action. Mm -hmm. And how, let me ask you, I'm just going to catch you flat foot and put you right on the spot. Welcome <laughs> to the show. So when, when you move from preschool to into leading people, what sort of skills would you say translated to what you do now? You know, just uh, trying to be clear, you know, I, I think that's the biggest thing is like clear is kind. And with children, you know, if you're not clear with them on what you expect and what you want them to do, then they're probably not going to do it. And I think, you know, that goes with business too. You just have to be upfront with your people, tell them your expectations, um, you know, just be train them, train them and be clear with your training. Make sure they understand. Sometimes it's not going to be one way, you know, you're not just going to be able to say, this is how we do it. And then they they might not get it the first time or the first seven times. So <laughs> the first 26 times, <laughs> the first 26 <laughs> times, but you just have to be kind and just um, help them learn. However they learn best. I no, I think that's a really good point. I think you, I, you just, or I picked up on your first quote and that's going to be clarity is kind. I think that being yeah. clear is being kind. I think that's a really strong statement because if people understand what to do, and you take the time to invest in them and, you know, show them how to do it and so forth, mm -hmm. then um, not only is it kind to them, but the, isn't it sort of kind to you as a leader? <laughs> Doesn't it help you get more stuff done too? Yeah. And, you know, our toughest job as leaders is to hold people accountable. But if you're clear with them up front, you know, it makes that a whole lot easier to just come back and say, hey, you know, Remember we talked about this, you know, how could I have been more clear, you know, <laughs> just stuff like that. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you, as you're moving, you mentioned accountability. Um, 
what are some ways that you use right, uh, right now? Because again, I know you're on the front lines. You are actively in it. Like this is not theory for you, right? Yeah. When it comes to leading and communicating with people. Um, how do you, as as a leader, how do you approach or how do you attack accountability in the workplace? What are some key things, especially for people that are watching this? Maybe they're newer leaders. What are some things that you could recommend? Hey, you should do this. And it'll help you to hold people accountable. You know, one of my um, favorite things to say is just lead by example, you know, show them the way. And then if they're not doing it, as long as you've walked the walk, you know, you can come back and say, hey, look, I've done this. I've been in your shoes. I, I've been there. And, you know, we need I need you to do this now, you know, and I think they'll take it a little more serious if they know that you've been there and you've done that before. I think that's really valuable too. I do think it's important as leaders, you have to have some level of skill, don't you? And what you're asking others to do. Maybe you don't have to be an expert. I, for me, I've always been okay. Like I, I said this right before you and I came on the air, like one of the ways that you and I met, you came out and uh, we spent some time training together. And even now to this day, you'll, you'll text me from time to time. You're like, Hey, what do you have that's going on and what's working? But likewise, yeah. Uh, the, sometimes the roles reverse. I've looked to you and said, Hey, Houston, we have a problem. Melissa, what are you doing? That's working, right? What, what are you guys working on when it comes to, to, to marketing, to people, to hiring? Yeah. Moving, moving into that. Um, cause we're talking about accountability. Let me, I'm going to shift gears just a little bit here. And besides the accountability piece, um, because I do think it's important to keep people accountable because when you keep people accountable, they often want to do a good job for you, right? They know what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, because right now, socially, we have a, a little bit of a tough environment on the outside pushing in on us in business. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So how do you keep people motivated that are working for you as a leadership? How do you keep them fired up and and wanting to be in that place that they are at with you? Yeah, it's definitely not easy. You know, you have to make it a little bit fun. You have to bring in, you know, some fun things. We sometimes will play games, which I actually learned from you, Mike. Um, you know, we'll bring in games and we'll get them motivated. We'll listen to music. Um, we'll talk about, you know, we'll talk about what they're struggling with on the phones. And yeah, that's just the main thing. Like we have to remember that they, we are dealing with humans and mm -hmm. They like the th same things that we like, the same things that our customers like. And, you know, it, I, I just think that you just have to make it a little bit fun so that they enjoy coming to work because we're here all day long. <laughs> well, and I think that goes for any business, right? So, certainly in the automotive industry. And I thank you for the compliment that you learned it from me because a lot of people you could tell that to be like, oh, well, we keep it fun. We do games at work. And they're like, that seems really counterproductive. Right. So how do you, how do you overcome that? Because, it, you know, you, you working for Nick, I mean, does he let you have free reign? I mean, he trusts you as a leader. I think, I think trust is a, is a important um, characteristic to have in, in yeah. your leaderships and a mutual trust uh, across your peers. Obviously he trusts you to run that. What sort of things would you say um, uh, to somebody that says, well, that's that's really counterproductive, Melissa. How could you go on this show and say that we're supposed to play games and listen to music and have fun? <laughs> well, uh, I think I think there's a time and a place, right? Like you look at your meeting structure and say, okay, where can I bring some fun into this, right? And you're gonna do sure. training, you're gonna do training anyway. So you might as well have part of the training fun. And you know, I just think people will take more out of it if it and look forward to it. They'll look forward to coming to the training if it's if they take something out of it and it, you know, it's not always just do this, do that. It's more like, you know, this is this is why we do this. This is why we do this. And they're they're gonna be behind the mission and like, you know, get excited. Well, and I think it's important, you know, you've you've mentioned training a couple of times and you said, Hey, what's what's uh like training is a valuable piece operating in business because it that in itself helps people keep people motivated because it's like oh hey i have an opportunity to grow myself and move from this place on down the road to the next place and feel like uh, you know i'm more valuable today than i was yesterday and so forth mm -hmm. as you're as you're talking about so so being teachable 
having somebody that's willing to learn is obviously a valuable asset as somebody who's in a leadership role over now six, you said six stores, right? You don't want to say five. If Nick's watching this, he's been <laughs> um, well, yeah, we are six. <laughs> so, okay. So if you're, you're running that over a six store operation, besides somebody that is teachable and willing to learn, what are some other qualities you look for as a leader for people that you're wanting to hire? That's a really good question. Um, I mean, the main one is the coachable, you know, are they willing to learn? Um, and then, you know, just we we have core values at Marcosi and Auto, mm -hmm. and that's what we hire on. And one of them is energy and enthusiasm. And Love you it. can tell when somebody has energy, you know what I mean? When they come in and they look all tired and like, you know, and you're like, oh, man, like what, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. And if they're like, I have nothing to say, it's like, oh, OK, or tell me a little bit about what you like to do for fun, um, stuff like that. And I just feel like you can get a good sense of how much energy they have because we we need the energy. If you've seen Nick's commercials, you know, we bring the energy. <laughs> Absolutely. So so being teachable. Mm -hmm. energy, enthusiasm. Give me two more. What are two other things people could look for? If they're, if you're saying, okay, I'm going to bring people onto this team because it, as a leader, it is our job to build the team, right? It's yeah. our job to build uh, not just the team, but a winning team and people that have a uh, uh, desire to win people that have the adaptability and the ability to learn so they can win. Right. So if we said learning energy, enthusiasm, what are two more things you would say people should look for when they're hiring people onto their team? Yeah, I think too, like, you know, the energy is great, but also just if they have humility, you know, just, um, recognizing that they have a lot of room for improvement and they're willing, they're here today to, you know, uh, grow and they want to try a new challenge. I love that when people are like, you know, I want to do something that's going to challenge me a little more. Like that gets me excited because I'm like, man, this person wants to continue to grow. And, sure. and so I like that. Um, trying to think of one other one. So humility. Well, I, I will, I'll take that as two. I'll give you two points <laughs> for that one because I would say that's the, this is about the third week that that's come up and we've talked about humility, humility with people and humility and leadership. Like you have to be willing to, to accept that you're, you're not the end all be all. If people think that they're perfect, that's one of uh, perfectionism. I, I think is a flaw in many ways. Like, yeah, we all want to strive for perfection, but at the yeah. same time, uh, if that's all we're going after, or if we accept or we believe that's where we're at, man, that's just a huge like punch in the jaw, right? So humility. So so we'd say energy, enthusiasm, humility, being teachable, uh, being willing to learn, and then the last one that you said as you were just talking here is uh, somebody that's willing to take risks, right? Yeah. They're willing to take chances to grow. So that's mm -hmm. why I said I'd give you two is because people are, <laughs> are willing to take risks and, and chances. So let me ask you on the flip side of that, besides somebody, so you're in a leadership role hiring people in, and those are, those are five things. What are a couple or three characteristics that you would say are um, the, a few key characteristics of, of people that have influenced your life as leaders? Two yeah. or three things from a leadership perspective. So this, you know, uh, it, this is hard for me to pinpoint because I feel like I've had so many great leaders in my life that have influenced how, you know, I do things. And I used to think there was always one way, one way to be lead. And, you know, I was like, I got to figure out what that one way is. And, you know, I think everybody has different ways to lead. Right. And you just have to sure. pick and choose from the ways you like to others that lead to how you want to lead. And so, um, you know, one person that I would say taught me a lot is my mom. She was a leader since I was, you know, very young. She ran child care centers and, you know, I just saw her, she just worked her butt off and she, she did it in a way where, you know, everyone just really looked up to her. And I, we go out places all the time and people are like, oh, Miss Lisa, they call her Miss Lisa. Mm -hmm. And they all know her, you know, because she's, she's just always so caring. And, you know, she was a great, great leader. And she still is. And then um, I, I put Nick, you know, Marcosian down too, because he, he's just given me so much opportunity. 
And I, he always looks for the good things in people. And um, he's even like pointed some stuff out that I didn't even think about myself, you know? Um, And so I think I, I use that and I try to see, you know, potential in people that they might not even realize they have, you know? Sure. So you would say seeking the, seeking the good out, finding the positives in people, and mm-hmm. then certainly, like, like again, like that kindness, as you said, your mom, I, 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 there was a joke in there somewhere. And she said, oh, she ran child care centers and everybody really looked up to her. It's because they're all yay high. <laughs> right. right. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, when, when we're talking about characteristics that define leadership, and I think you said something really valuable there, is the fact that there is not one way to do it. And we, we all, I think, often assume, well, I'm going to get in this role. I'm going to be leading people. And there's, there's so not one way to do it. There's not even one way to look at it. There's just one side. There's one facet to the way we do things. I think it's interesting as yeah. we started the conversation here and you said, hey, I, I, you were preschool teaching and your mom was in, in daycares. And that is a whole different style of leadership, right? At the same time, there's really valuable qualities. You know, I was a youth sports coach for for years, and there are really valuable qualities that we learn in leadership when you start in that position. Like you literally start in that position and then grow, right? One one uh, that I can think of right now, for goodness sake, patience. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have patience when you're when you're when you're coaching youth, when you're leading youth. You really have to have patience. And I think a lot of that it transcends from those levels where we start at into, you know, bigger roles, whether you're managing a department or managing a six dealer group, you know, a, a, a department within a six dealer group or on up to when you get into a position where you're an owner or CEO, all of those things are going to transcend things like patience. And, and you said at the beginning, clarity, um, yeah kindness you, you know those are our principles that never change um so let me ask you a question because you we you've talked a lot about um one of the things that you you said is like seeing the the good in others seeing the opportunities in others and so how do you how would you tell somebody if they're watching this to recognize the achievements and the opportunities that others have. What are some things that you do in that arena? Man, you're really drilling me here. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is what we do. I know, I know. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is you just have to care about the people that you're leading, and then you're gonna find what motivates them. You're gonna you're gonna come up with ways to lead them um, because you care about that person. You know. Sure. That's, that's the biggest thing is like, I try to find out more about my, my people so that I know what motivates them and helps them grow. And, and then I can also say, Hey, look, you're, you're missing out on this. And I think you would be great with this. You, you have background in this. Why haven't you tried this? You know, if you know the people, um, you can see the good side and you can see where they can improve as well. So how do you approach that when they need to improve somewhere? So what do you, you know, how do you, how do you give feedback, especially difficult feedback? If it's something that they're, if somebody's sucking, (laughs) let's call it like it is. No, most, most leaders, most people dread doing that because again, on one side, like you just said, Hey, I care about you. I care about the person and it can be hurtful to give difficult feedback stuff that is, is painful at the same time. It can be more hurtful if you don't give them the feedback. Right. So how do you approach Mm -hmm. that? Well, I think that's part of loving them as well as being able to give that feedback. And, you know, Nick, Nick Marcosi, and he's done this a lot with me. He'll give me some tough feedback, but he, you know, tells me he loves me and he knows that I can do it. And so I think that's the best way is just telling them like, look, I believe in you. Um, and I know you can do this and I, I've seen you do it before. You just sure. have to, you just have to get back to the basics and this is what you, this is your one thing that you're in charge of and you got to make sure it gets done. And if it's not getting done, then I'm going to continue to follow up with you and be on your butt <laughs> to make sure it gets done. Well, so. and, no, and I, and I think that is, um, 
I think that can be a difficult conversation in itself. Sometimes when somebody has done something and they're not doing it and you know, they can do it. I, I've literally said that to team members before, like when they'll achieve this new height of success, they just knocked it out of the park. They came up here and you're like, Hey, you know, here's the thing. You have a new accountability level. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, but that's the best I've ever done. And, and it's like, right, but that's fine. If you've already achieved it, if you've already climbed the mountain here, guess what? That's no longer your best. You're already capable of it. So what's next? Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's valuable to, to as, a, as a leader to make sure that you are constantly pushing and growing the people around you. I think also it's really important as a leader that you're constantly pushing and growing yourself you know, and, and surrounding yourself with the, the right people. I've heard, you've heard this many times. I've heard this many times. Like you, you are the reflection or the sum of the five people that you're, you, you have in your circle and are, are closest to. You've heard that before, right? Like yep. your five closest friends are the sum of those people. Yep. So let me ask you, Melissa, again, if we're giving people, the, if, if we're giving something to the audience today, what are a couple or three ways you would recommend? What are some ways you grow yourself to stay out in front? And what are some ways that that you would say, hey, look, go do this as a leader, again, leadership perspective, go do this thing because it'll help grow you. And then that way you can grow others. What are a couple of things that you do? Yeah. I mean, first of all, if you're watching this, you're already doing, you're already doing it because Mike is legit. And you know what? I give a lot of the credit to him because he kind of just... I just started following people Mike followed, really. And then <laughs> and then I on Facebook and stuff like that. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, these people are cool. You know, and so I just I'm I just kind of started watching podcasts, um, getting magazines. I mean, you name it. If you're in a certain industry, you should know about that industry and what's going on. And then you should find like-minded people that think like you to follow. And there's there's a lot of people out there, you just have to find it, you know. And so I would say number one is just find somebody that can, you know, be your mentor and you can give them feedback, but they can give you feedback. Um, And I've been to several conferences that were awesome. I learned a lot from those Um, books. I've read a lot of books and some of books are great. And some I'm like, I don't know what I really took from that. So you just, yeah. So what do you, what do you do? Um, when you're saying, Hey, first off, thank you for the compliment. I, I appreciate that. So, so yeah, you heard it here first folks, right? If you're, if, if you're watching this podcast, go look at the other people that are watching this podcast and connect with them because they all, they're all people that want to grow. So the, um, what do you, because you said, okay, hey, some of the books books and, and podcasts or other people, a lot of times they're really great. You can get a lot of information from them, but the other times they're, they're like you said, they're not, right? How do you know what is good or what is bad, what's going to work for you, what isn't? If it's something that you think is not that great, what do you do with it then? Yeah, so I, I wanted to say I have kind of like three – personal core values. And, you know, sometimes when I'm reading a book, I'm like, does this fit really what I'm trying to do or not? You know? So number one is just lead from the heart and number two, lead by example. And then number three is just have fun. And so if I can implement the book into those three personal core values, then great. I do. But some of them, I'm like, this is a little intense. Like some of them are like, little harsh (laughs) and I'm like I don't know so that's kind of how I do it (laughs) no I think that's really good I think that's something that a lot of leaders should explore and I was taking notes here while you were saying that like hey lead from the heart lead by example have fun I I would challenge people that are watching this or if you're listening to this uh, on a a, you know podcast later because you can tune in anywhere and if you haven't liked and subscribed the show make sure that you do that you gotta get the plug in right like (laughs) and subscribe um but I think it's important that going back to what you said earlier, like leadership is not a cookie cutter thing. It's not all one size fits all. And so one thing that you've done that you just mentioned now, that's really valuable, like lead from the heart, lead by example, have fun. Those are my core values. I would challenge anybody that's watching this show or listening to it. What are your core values? Do you know who you are to be able to grow yourself? And if you don't, Melissa just said it a minute ago, like, hey, it's important that you find other people that are like-minded that can help, you know, either push or pull you along, right? 
So yeah. um, let me ask you a, a question too. Uh, let's see. How, how would you say, and I have an idea of how you might answer this, but how would you say your, because you were talking earlier, like, hey, sometimes it was at the very beginning of the show, you said, sometimes you just got to go and this is the way and you got to get stuff done. And, and uh, other times you got to show you, you care about your people and so forth. How would you describe sort of your leadership style? Are you more um, consensus and collaborative? Are you more direct uh, with folks? Is there, is there a time for, for each of those? How, how, what would you say to that? Uh, that's man. Um, I don't really know. I just, I just like to, I like collaborative, you know, like asking mm -hmm. questions and saying, because they're going to be more bought in to the solution than if you're just telling people what to do all the time. Sure. So I like asking questions and getting everybody to agree on the best way to do things. And, um, you know, I just, yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> so more collaborative and consensus. What would you, what would you say? Could, is it realistic to think everybody's going to agree on the same direction and the same thing? Oh no. Everybody has their own way of thinking, but that's good. It brings different things to the table. You know, one person might see this point of view, but then this other person might see this other point of view and you're just in the middle, like, okay, how can we bring these together and see what's going to fit best for our customer, or our business? Sure. So how do you handle it in situations uh, and we have this happen all the time, right? In, in business, if you don't have this happen, then you're, you're not growing, but all of the time you'll have people like you just said, that have different ideas, different directions. And so how do you move past that? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is thinking it through, right? If we tried it this way, this is the result that we might get. And then if we tried it this way, maybe this is the result. And just thinking it out loud together and thinking it through. I mean, usually we're able to say, okay, maybe that's not the best way. We should try this for this particular issue. <laughs> I'm going I'm to help coin this for you because you said thinking it through. But at first, I thought you said think and get through. <laughs> and I was like, either way works, right? You have to think it through. But if you think, well, then you can get through it. <laughs> so um, so when we're talking about, you know, how do you, how do you navigate if you have, like, let's say employees, because, again, you're in the business right now. How do you navigate if employees aren't getting along? Like they're so passionate about their side. They're just refusing. Nope. This is the best way to do it. No, this is the best way to do it. Right. Tastes great. Less filling. Right. You remember that the, those commercial, well, you probably don't, you're much younger than me, <laughs> but I, how do you, how do you navigate through that to make sure that your team stays motivated and can, can help them to get along? How do you, you coach or moderate people that don't get along like that? You know, I guess I'm pretty lucky. I haven't had that happen too often, but every once in a while we will. Um, and I think sometimes you just have to let it sit too. Like, let's just table this and let's think about this in a little bit and see what happens, you know, and then we can bring it back up. Um, but as far as like, if they weren't like getting along or something like that, sometimes it's just, you, you have to handle it outside of a meeting like hey let's sit down and like let's really hammer this out and figure out what's the best solution it's, sure it's so tough <laughs> it it is so um i'm gonna i'm gonna flip the script on you for a minute and one that's not on here because you know again i we keep it really wide open but i do send a couple of prep questions so that that we're not not sitting here totally flat <laughs> but um as someone that's in a leadership role how do you handle it or how would you recommend people handle it if they're not hitting the goal that they intended because your team sees that don't they mm -hmm. so what are what's you know what's maybe a time that you didn't hit what you wanted to hit or what were expected to hit and how did you handle that for yourself yeah so i i 
this one touches me right now because we had a rough month then last month. And, you know, I could have blamed everything if I wanted to, I could have said it, you know, was this, that and everything. But I, the first thing you have to do is just look at yourself. What could I have done differently so that we had a different outcome? And the biggest thing, you know, that we kind of got away from was just, um, not having fun. Like we, we were just so serious. Everyone was so serious all the time. And it's like, we have to, and it comes back to your core value. Like we're not having fun. We're not bringing the energy and enthusiasm that we need. Um, and so I think just, I think that's the main thing is look at yourself first. Then you can come back to your team and say, look, I'm going to take this on. And I, you guys are part of this, obviously, you know, and we're going to work together so we don't have another month like that. Absolutely. And I think that's really valuable. And if, again, um, Joe, Joseph Heafy, he's a buddy of mine. He's in the side. He says, hey, what I appreciate about my leadership is they uh, invest in their people, build us up, take time developing relationships, building great teamwork skills. Absolutely. And it sounds like you have an awesome team, Joe. And one of the things uh, here is we're talking about like, hey, what what happened a time that you failed as a leader or you struggled as a leader. And I think Melissa, you bring a really good point of like, you got to take ownership over it. And that's, that's really, really hard to acknowledge. That's, that goes back to, you know, even the core values of somebody that you're hiring, they got to have the humility and they have to be humble in the fact that like, Hey, if I'm, if I'm the top, the so to speak, then the, the buck stops with me. You got to be willing to get your ego bruised. You have to be willing to to accept the ownership over the fact that ultimately it it's your your decisions. And I think it's valuable too that you're saying, hey, the, the that's the first thing you look at. And then you do have to look at the team. I think it is valuable to look at the the people on your team because it's it's not just a one person failure. If you're in a team environment, if you're in a business environment, unless you're like a solopreneur, <laughs> um, it's it's a group effort. Winning is a group effort and losing is a group effort, right? You all, it's all things that led to it. Um, I think it's valuable too, that you, you said, and, and you stuck with this, like when we were talking about how do you build teamwork up and how do you build through somebody? And you said, Hey, you got to have, have fun. You do games, you do stuff. And there's a lot to be said because having fun, when you do something that's enjoyable, um, it, it does build energy. It, it, there's an unspoken, there's an unmeasurable, and I don't say immeasurable, but an unmeasurable value to having fun, to shifting yeah. mindset, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. And yeah, it's just like we have to remember that we're all just humans and we're all just people and that, you know, we just need to come together and just figure it out together. You know, we're, we're a team and we do need to celebrate those little wins. Like when we have wins, celebrate them. And when it's tough, we have to, you know, talk about it. It's tough, but we're, we're a good team and we're going to get back on track. <laughs> yeah. I, it, people will be surprised. And it's always cheesy. I've said this many times on many shows in the past that hugs and high fives will carry you through a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pe people, people always think like, yes, I understand. And especially the current environment we're in, it, you know, money is valuable, right? The cost mm -hmm. of goods is going up. All of those things like you, money shows value to people, but so do some of the little things, a coffee, a thank you, a high five, a hug. It really seriously, people value appreciation and, and that, that you can't put a dollar figure on that. Right. Right. Like what's the what's the cut and and again this could be a little cheesy and frou frou but like what 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 dollar figure can you put on a smile right right so um gosh there was there was something else you said i was going to bring back up oh here here you go here's here's the question so let's say you acknowledged hey i messed up it was it was me right i made these decisions that led us to us how do you power through that how do you move past it um, you know, you just move past it. You don't dwell on it. You, you forgive yourself. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's hard, but you have to forgive yourself and just say, look, you know, it's not going to help to sit here and stew in my, uh, you know, pity. So move past sure. it and let's find a way to overcome it. One, the, the thing that Nick said the other day, the owner, he, um, Sure. He said, I like playing offense and not defense. And I love that. 
you know, and that really stuck with me since we had that meeting. And I'm like, what can we do to score a point? What can we do? There's so many right. things we could do, you know, unlimited. There's unlimited things we could do to to score another point. And we just have to be have that on, you know, that mindset of being on the offense. I, it's funny as you talk about this. I remember my, my oldest son played football all through high school. And he had some really good coaches, you know, in, yeah. in leadership roles. And while you're talking about offense and defense, there's two things I, re I distinctly remember. Uh, one is like where, where people say, you know, oh, defense wins championships and so forth. Yes, we've all heard that. But you have to score points at some time. <laughs> you, you Right. It right. can't just be a stalemate. Zero, zero. You got to put points on the board. So mm -hmm. as a, as a leader, as a coach, as a as a person that is in a role that's supposed to be driving people to make results, you got to score points at some point. Yeah. And the other thing I remember his coaches saying, because they would have, you know, Friday or Saturday games. And this was really valuable. They're like this is way off in left field, but just roll with me on this. <laughs> and and I think when you said, "Hey, don't dwell on it," I remember his coaches because you don't you don't win every game. People that are winning in life don't win every single time they attempt something. And I think that it, it we lose sight of that because on YouTube and all the other stuff, we get to see people's highlight reel, right? Oh, we look at to see all the wins. Everybody's winning all the time. And it's like, yeah, but it took something to get to that point. Anyway, I digress. The it, it, I remember his coaches saying, look, if we lost a game, you're allowed to focus on the screw-ups you had for 24 hours. But after tomorrow, don't ever look back because you can't go back and change it anyway. Yeah, that's a good one. So when you, I mean, when you screw up, like, yeah, you focus on it, dwell on it, figure out, hey, what was it that caused us to fail? What, what put us in this place? You do need to look at it so that you don't repeat it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to look at it and say, I blew it. I failed here. This sucked. And okay. You can dwell on it for 24 hours, but after that, there's no going back. Just don't repeat it. You yeah. know, you can, you can make mistakes. You just don't make the same mistakes over and over because then it's no longer a mistake. It's a choice. Yeah, exactly. You just have to take it as a lesson and move on. So um, as we're, we're kind of coming down the pipe here, let's see. Oh, oh, here's a good one. So we've talked a lot about, and we talk a lot on this show about like leadership strengths. And I asked you early on, like, what, what are some characteristics? What are the things you look for in people? What are the things you look for in leadership? Let me frame this one a little different. Are there leadership weaknesses? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, if the, one of the things I mentioned earlier was lead by example. And sometimes, you know, it's like we tell our people, oh, it's important to be on time. It's so important to be on time. And then we show up late, you know, and it's sure. like, you have to really think about what you're doing. Another huge one that has really hit me lately is, are we, are you listening to your people? You know, listen to what they have to say, because it's important. They're, they're going to tell you all the answers. If you just listen, you just have to listen to them and they, they'll crazy. tell you what they need. I know it is crazy, but sometimes we get so busy doing all this stuff that we forget like our people are there and they're watching us and they're, we need to listen to them and then we can help them become better. Well, and I think that's one of the things oftentimes you flip the script on it, right? You get into a management or leadership role and then all of a sudden, and this will sound terrible to say it like this so not to be taken out of context. Like all of a sudden we think what we have to say is really valuable, right? Or it's more valuable. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that people that are working with us or for us, I would say people that are working with us, right? Cause we're all collaborative working and moving in the same direction. Uh, you're absolutely right. You nailed it. Like people will tell you what they need if you listen. So when we're saying like, are there leadership weaknesses? Yeah, but it's it's usually the things that like like uh, that are so simple. Okay, like, yeah. hey, they're not willing to, they're they're not willing to listen to their people because they think what they have to say is more valuable. So they're willing to listen to themselves, right? Which is a very self centered, conceited way to look at things. Or, um, you know, thinking we said earlier, like thinking that they have all the answers. I think it is important that when people get into uh, when they get into a leadership role, they don't have all the answers, right? Yeah. Most people got into a leadership role by doing exactly what you're talking about. They led by example. They were just doing the things. 
right? That it's like, oh, I was doing this. And so I was acknowledged for my hard work. And then I got there. Um, one thing that Joe brought up earlier, and he says, hey, I appreciate the leadership that they invest in their people, build this up, take time. Uh, do, do you use out for, for your staff, for your group, do you use outside training resources? Do you handle everything in, in-house so that it comes through you? Um, we do a mixture of both. Uh, we've hired, you know, consultants to come in and, you know, sometimes they'll be saying exactly what we said, but just hearing it from them, they're like, Ooh, you know, (laughs) so (laughs) it's nice to bring in some people. Um, but then a lot of the training is you, you know, getting on the phone and digging in the weeds, getting in the weeds with them and, and looking you know, into like exactly what they're saying to people and, and just saying, Oh, have you tried this? You know, or that was great. That was an awesome response. You know, just get digging deep with them means a lot to them. Absolutely. I I do think now more than ever, people are looking for someone to lead beside them rather than just out in front of them. Mm -hmm. And And there is a time and place, like we need leaders that are willing to go out in front and cut the path and, and, do new things, right? That the, we need we need leaders that are are willing to open a sixth store, <laughs> right? At the same time, we need leaders that are in the trenches, like you, that are are saying, "Okay, well, give me the reins, and and I can jump in here and and do this." Um, you know, at F. Uh, let me ask you one more question because we talk a lot about like working in the business, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Joe said too, you know, communication with your team is paramount. I think communication is huge. The the one thing people lose sight of, uh, actually, I'll ask you, Melissa, what do you think is the best way to communicate with somebody? Like, how do you teach communication? Because that's something you do. (laughs) Well, I think you have to figure out how they want to be, like, communicate with you. Sometimes they're not all the same, you know, and you do have to bend a little bit for some people. And, and I think that's part of just being a great leader is just kind of, uh, you know, I guess, you know, molding like what they're looking for. You're not just going to be the same every single time you're going to, you're going to be like, Hey, how can I help you in particular? You like to be communicated through text. I'm going to text you. If you like calls, I'm going to call you, (laughs) you know? Sure. Um, Yep. Well, I think that's, I, I mean, I think that's really simple. And I think we lose sight of that. We always communicate from our inside, right? We communicate from here out. Mm-hmm. And the reality is that the quality of our communication is not how well we think we're doing at it, but how well someone's receiving it. And so I think you hit the nail on the head is, okay, well, how do they prefer to be communicated with? Do they need hugs and high fives? Do they need somebody to listen to them? Do they need somebody to send them a text or an email or a phone call or whatever, right? Do we need to go sit down and have coffee, right? Mm -hmm. Some some people, that's like the biggest thing in the world, especially if you are a leader watching the show, one of the biggest things, the biggest moments for somebody might be the, the 30 minutes you invest in them face to face this week. Mm-hmm. No one on one, either on site or off site. So, right, and it could be that they don't need like you doing all of that. They like to be by themselves and like just sure. you know they're in their zone. But then there might be other people that they need a lot of that, and sure. you just you just have to be flexible. You can't just be stuck in your ways because we're people and we're all different. <laughs> well, and I think that's valuable too because as I'm saying this and you're like, Hey, some people need to be by themselves. You're, you're thinking, if you're thinking, Hey, let's go sit down at a, a, a Starbucks and have you know coffee for 30 minutes. And that person's going, just give me the gift card. I'd rather have the Starbucks <laughs> gift card. Right. right. I, I don't. And, and, and like it, you, the only way you can know that about somebody is to know that about somebody. It's you said at the very beginning, you got to care about your people. Mm-hmm. So as we're coming yeah. down to the tail end here, let me ask you, to, you know, because we always want to give our, our viewers and our listeners, uh, you know, sort of actionable items, p- things that they can grow. And you've shared a lot of really good, like very simple, down to earth, just good, actionable stuff. That's one of the things that I love about you is you, you just kind of cut through all of the the uh, the smoke or the mirrors and you know because a lot of times you go through and it's like oh i gotta say this thing just perfectly and do this and you're like look just do this here's simple so 
what what are some maybe final pieces of advice? Give me a few things you might tell somebody that's coming up in business or management leadership. If they're like you, you said, you know, Nick took a chance on you and moved you uh, from being a really good employee into a management leadership role. If you're talking to somebody in that scenario, what are the first two or three things that they should do? What's some advice you might give somebody that is in that direction from your experience? Yeah, I would say number one, you know, just sometimes you can learn from other people. You know what I mean? Don't come in and just start marking orders. Just take take it all in and, to, you know, start building those core values that we, like I talked about earlier. I didn't even know what core values I uh, my core values, you know what I mean? I had to learn and I had to take them from other people that I, that I surrounded myself with. And so just kind of build those and figure out what kind of leader you want to be. Do you want to be, you know, um, somebody that leads from the heart or, you know, I don't know. It just find out what kind of leader you want to be. Um, lead by example, like I mentioned earlier, is if you're going to ask somebody to do it, you got to walk in their shoes. And I promise they're going to take you way more seriously if you've actually done it yourself. And then, you know, just the last one I I've mentioned is have fun, find ways to bring fun to the table. Just, I mean, even if it's just starting out with a positive, you know, great news message in the meetings or whatever, just say, you know, Hey guys, can we talk about some great news first? And then let's get to the issues. <laughs> um, sure. Bring, just bring a little bit of fun and enjoy it enjoy it. It's a journey and it's never over. Like I'm still learning a ton and, um, I'm excited when I go to conferences cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to learn something new and this is going to be great. And so that would, that's all I have to say. <laughs> no, I think that's great. And I, I do think that's a really, uh, valuable characteristic that you have is I I've, again, I've known you for many years and you are constantly learning like lead, the the best leaders are learners. Leadership is learning. And I think that's uh, something that is so, so valuable. And I, I, I do love the fact that you've continued to say, have fun. Like you got to take, you, you got to take the job seriously. You got to take the results seriously, but you don't always have to take yourself so seriously. <laughs> so, no. Yeah. Um, you got to have a little bit of fun. Just sprinkle a little pixie dust. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. I do pixie dust. So, I, I mean, that sounded terrible. I don't do pixie <laughs> Gee, many Christmas. That should be an outtake. That shouldn't even be live on the show. So sprinkle the pixie dust. That's All right. Funny. Well, sounds good. Melissa, thank you so much for joining me today on the Leadership Toolkit. I really, really appreciate your time. I think you brought some really valuable resources for people. Um, if people want to connect with you, what's the best place? You know, I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. Just... Yeah, I'm Melissa of, Hibden. Yeah, Melissa Hibden. You can find me anywhere. I'm on Instagram. I don't know. <laughs> That's about okay. it. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, look up Melissa. She's uh, She is awesome. If you want somebody that you can learn from uh, and somebody that is constantly learning themselves, I would encourage everybody to connect with her because, again, she has no shortage. She's uh, And the best part is, like I said, I know when I contact you, you're always willing to share, and I know you do that for anybody. That's super valuable. So yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you again. All right. Well, thank you everybody again for joining me today on the Leadership Toolkit. Again, I would encourage you connect with Melissa. She's absolutely awesome. Make sure do me a favor, tune in every Wednesday. We do this at 12:05 Mountain Time, 2:05 Eastern Time. You can uh, join us. Join us in the comments. We're happy to take real live uh, questions and comments and tackle those things. Otherwise, I've got a whole bunch of great guests lined up through September. And make sure you can again, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, connect with me on Facebook. And if you're listening, if you're an audio person, you can listen to this podcast anywhere that you get audio podcasts. So thank you again for joining me today on the Leadership Toolkit. I look forward to seeing you again next week. We'll talk to you soon, everybody.